Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number three from the January 2010 GCE Mechanics M1 paper from Edexcel. This is one from the old spec, spec um, but it's very much relevant to what we do now. So here we have a question on statics where a particle of mass m kilograms is attached at C to two light and extensible strings AC and BC. The other ends of the strings are attached to fixed points A and B. On a horizontal ceiling, the particle hangs in equilibrium with AC and BC inclined to the horizontal at 30 degrees and 60 degrees respectively as shown in figure one. Given that the tension in AC is 20 newtons, um, find the tension in BC. Okay, so we have this information which I'm going to put onto the diagram here. So we know that there's a, a mass of mass uh, there's a mass m okay we don't know its value okay we have to find it that's one of the things we need to find in this question so we got this mass okay which the weight of this mass is mg because mass is m so this is its weight is mg newtons okay and we have the tension in ac is 20 newtons so this tension so the the force is acting on the particle this tension on the string 20 newtons that way and this tension on the string which we have to find so if we consider just the particle alone those are the forces i've just drawn it here the forces acting on the particle are those forces so those are the forces acting only on the particle okay those are the forces acting on the particle i'm not thinking about the forces acting on the ceiling just the particle itself you have its weight and you have the tension pulling this way and tension pulling that way, keeping in equilibrium. Okay, so all those forces are balanced out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a line that will help us to work out some of these angles involved here. So I'm going to draw a line going through this. Try and put it more straight. That will help us to work out some of the angles involved. Okay, because I know that this is horizontal and I've drawn a horizontal line. So this is 30 degrees, so this must also be 30 degrees. And this is 60 degrees, so this must also be 60 degrees by just by the fact of alternate angles, Z shape. All right, so that's going to help us. Now I want to, um, there's two ways of answering this question. I can spot something that will help me make this question really short, okay? Um, and that is the fact that this angle is 90 degrees. Because this is 30, this is 60, this must be 90. So these two forces are perpendicular and have no kind of effect on each other. There's 20 in the, in, and the T. If I resolve 20 in this direction, it will be zero. And if I resolve T in that direction, it's going to be zero as well. But we'll do that for a second. I'm going to show you first the normal way. If these angles, if it just happens that this angle is 90, that we can use this. If, if, the angles, if, this, if this angle wasn't 90, then we wouldn't be able to use what I just mentioned, which I'm going to show you at the end anyway. We'll just do the, the normal way first. So I'm going to resolve these forces such that I'm going to resolve them horizontally and vertically. So I'll draw a little kind of line here. So I'm going to resolve the forces vertically and horizontally. So let's look at uh, vertically first. And then we're going to look at horizontally. Now I'm going to use this opportunity now to help students understand how to resolve forces in an easy way. Some students get confused. How do I know when I resolve this way it's going to be sine or cosine or that way sine or cosine? How do I know how do I know that? Okay, now there's different ways you can do it. I'm going to show you a nice easy way by way of a presentation that I've made. So I'll switch to that now. So here we have this force 8 newtons. Okay, and the angle it makes with the horizontal here is 30 degrees. Okay, this angle makes with the horizontal. If we want to resolve this force in the direction of x, now the traditional way of doing that would be to say, okay, we have to think of a triangle, make a right angle triangle such that, you know, you've got one of the sides is parallel to one side that we're resolving it, so horizontally, and the other side is parallel to the other side we're, we're resolving, which in this case is vertically. So I draw a right angle triangle, so the two shorter sides will be parallel to the side to the direction that I want to resolve in and so here this is like the hypotenuse the a newtons okay and so if I want to find what this side is okay this is going to be the adjacent side so I'm going to say that cosine 30 equals you know um, x over 8 so I'll say cosine of 30 equals x over 8 so x equals 8 cosine 30 so this would be 8 times cosine 30 and this side which is like the vertical component you can say that, let's call that y, we can say that the sine of y 
equals, the sine of 30, sorry, equals y over 8. So y is equal to 8 times the sine of 30. Okay, so this, this, this component here up here will be um, 8 times sine 30. Okay, that's one way of understanding it, but a really nice, easy way of deal, dealing with it. That's basically what we're doing. Uh, that's actually what we're actually doing. But a nice way to think about it is as follows, that if you have the angle, if you have the force, and in order for you to resolve in a particular direction, you have to go through the angle, you know, where the angle is given, you have to fall into the angle, then you always use cosine. So because I want to resolve horizontally here, I'm going to, in this case, use cosine. Because I'm going into the angle. So that horizontal force is 8 cosine 30. And if I want to resolve, um, in this case, vertically, in the y direction, I have to go away from the angle given. The angle given is here, and I want to go in that direction. I'll go away from it. You see that I'm resolving in a direction away from the angle. So therefore, I have to use the sine. So that'll be 8 sine 30. So you're going into the angle, you use cosine. Going away from the angle, you use sine. And just to illustrate that, how that works, so supposing they didn't give us this angle over here. Supposing this angle was not given to us. Okay. Supposing it was the other angle that was given to us. Supposing they gave us this angle, which is going to be 60. If that's 30, this must be 60 because it's 90 degrees. Okay, so that's 60 degrees. In that case, if I want to resolve going in this direction, it's going to be 8 times going into the angle. It will be not sine 30, it will be cosine 60. And going away from the angle here, it will be instead of cosine 30, it will be sine 60. Going away from the angle given, which is 60. And as we know, cosine 60 and sine 30 both have the same value, a half. And sine 60 and cosine 30 both have the same value, root 3 over 2. So it will give you the same answer. It will be 8 times root 3 over 2, and that will be 8 times a half. Okay, so this idea of when you're going into the angle, you use cosine. Away from the angle given, you use sine. Really makes life very easy for you when you're dealing with a question like this. So just to recap, if you want to resolve the force going into the angle, you use cosine. If you want to resolve the force going away from the angle, you use sine. Okay, so back to our question. Okay, so now, if we apply that here, I want to resolve the forces uh, vertically. So I'm going to change my color so I can have that. So the, this T has a component going straight up, and this T has a component going horizontally. As the 20 newtons has a component going straight up, and it has a component going horizontally in this direction. So if we think about the, the vertical uh, component, this t, this is the angle given for the t. So as you can see, we're going to go away from the 60 degrees. So this will be t times away, that sine, 60. You can think of it, about it as you make a triangle with this side going to be, you know, um, vertical. That's the opposite side, so sine. And for this one, similarly, we're going to go away from the angle given. So this is going to be 20 times, going away from the angle, sine of 30. So what we can say here is t times the sine of 60 plus 20 times the sine of 30 is equal to mg. Okay, because the, the vertical forces, mg is acting vertically downwards. You don't have to resolve that. It's already vertically down. If we're resolving vertically, that's already vertically. But it's, it's in the opposite direction. So we can say that's the downward force. Those are the upward forces. They balance each other because we have statics here. It's in equilibrium. And horizontally, we have here t times... It's going into the angle when you resolve in this direction. You can think of it like that. If I make a little, um, you know, we can think of that's a force. I'm resolving that force going into the angle. So that's going to be cosine. When it was away from the angle, like up there, that was sine going into the angle. It's going to be cosine. So it'll be T times cosine 60. Now, the only other force horizontal is this force over here. Okay, which is at 20 newtons. And in this direction, again, it's going into the angle. So it's going to be, again, cosine. So it'll be cosine 30. So that's equal to T cosine 30. The weight has no component in the horizontal direction because it's vertical. So there we have those forces, okay, uh, resolved. So in the first equation, I have two unknowns. I have G and T. In the second equation, I have just one unknown. Uh, sorry, this is 20, not T. What am I doing? 
t cosine 60 equals 20 cosine 30. That's 20 cosine 30, and this was t uh, cosine 60. Okay, sorry about that. That's 20 there. I made, I made a mistake there. So this is going to be cosine 60 is a half. So it's a half t equals, and cosine 30 is root 3 over 2. So that's root 3 over 2 times 20. So the 2s cancel out if you multiply both sides by 2. So 2 is equal to 20, t is equal to 20 root 3 newtons. If you want, you can leave your answer like that. Okay, however, uh, what might be sensible for us to do here is to use the calculator. So 20 root 3, that gives us 34.64, t equals 34.64. For, da, da, da. So we can say 34.6 newtons. That's the tension in the string. Okay, um, so that's T there. And we got to find, so that's, that's, a, that's part A done. Okay, for part B, we can use the fact that we have the tension already. So I'll use it as 20 root 3. So 20 times root 3 times a sine of 60, which is root 3 over 2, plus 20 times sine 30, which is 20 times a half equals m which you have to find times g which is 9.8 and for a fact i'll call it g for now and in the end we can write answer in terms of g and then in terms of what we need to write in terms of so this 20 cancels with the 10, 20 20 comes with the 2 gives you 10 10 times root 3 times root 3 is 3 that's 30 plus 20 times a half which is 10 equals mg so we got 40 40 equals mg, so we can say m equals 40 over g, which we can then write as 40 divided by 9.8, which gives us uh, 4.0816, 4.0816, so we can say that m is equal to, we can write this as 4.1 kilograms, or we can write it as 4.08 kilograms. They accept both um, one decimal place, oh, sorry, one significant, sorry, two significant figures or three significant figures when we're using GINA calculations. All right, so that's how we can write our answers for this question. All right, so that's by resolving force. This, this question is not so difficult to, to use or to, to solve using um, this method. It's quite easy to, to solve using this method. But there's another method we could also use to solve this question. Um, because only and you know only because the angles here are such that this angle is 90 degrees and these forces are perpendicular so I'm going to show you how to do that as well okay so here we have the situ same situation we have basically this um, particle at C we have its weight mg we have tension in the string bc which we have to find and tension in the string ac which is 20 newtons now the thing that's um you know kind of like special about this particular question which will help us is the fact that this angle here is a right angle because this angle is a right angle that helps us greatly in terms of these two forces the t and 20 if i try to resolve t in this direction it will give me no uh, component in that direction because they're perpendicular just like the weight has no component in the horizontal direction this has no component in the direction that's perpendicular to this same as the 20 and the t so what i can do is i can say okay let me think about resolving forces in the direction of t and in the direction of 20 newtons so i'll have to resolve the mg in that direction and that direction and then that makes life a bit easier for me and I, and i'll be able to solve the problem a bit slightly easier maybe Okay, so that's an alternative way of doing it. So what I need to do here is I need to think about resolving in these directions. So I'm going to draw lines going like this and like this along these lines. Okay, now as we mentioned before, if that's 30, this is 30. We, we, and if this is 60, this is 60. Okay, so now what I can work out from that, if that's 30 degrees... That's 30 degrees, so this must be 60 degrees. If I, if I get that, that's fine. Even if I get this is 30, that's fine. But I've, I've figured out this is 60, so I'm going to get rid of all these other angles now so I don't get confused by them. Okay, I know that angle is 60 degrees for sure. And this is, is 30, but that's all I need. I just need one of them. I just An angle with, you know, these two directions in mind. 
So now, as we de decided before, um, you know, we can resolve, in this case, we're going to resolve the weight in the direction that I need. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing. Let me dr take this line here. So if I'm going to resolve in the, in the direction of the 20 newtons and also in the direction of T. So I'm not resolving horizontally and vertically, but in the direction of T and 20. And you'll understand why I do, I'm doing that because I only have to resolve mg then. I don't have to resolve the T and the 20 because uh, they don't have any components in each other's direction. So if I resolve this in, in the direction of the 20 newtons, then let's say we take that as positive. So 20 is equal to, well, they're equal to each other, so they balance each other out. 20 is equal to, now if I want to resolve this in that direction, I've got to resolve it over here. Okay, it's always the acute angle with that line of force. Won't be the obtuse angle, the acute one. So this is going to go into the angle of 60 degrees. Okay, so this goes into the angle. So therefore we're going to use, as we mentioned, cosine. Okay, if you want to think about it in terms of triangles, it's like we have a, a triangle. Like we have to draw it kind of like in the direction which is parallel to what we want and perpendicular. So in this, in this case, we're looking for the triangle, this part here, which is like the, the side, which is the adjacent side. So it's going to be cosine. So as we mentioned, this will be 20 equals mg times cosine 60. That's mg cosine 60. And if I want to resolve in the direction of the tension, okay, which is this direction here, then I have to, I've got t equals. So I have t equals. And then this is going to be mg going away from the angle given going away from the angle given what's happening here okay so here we're going away from the angle given so it's going to be using sine you can think of it as i want to resolve in this direction here um, in this direction here sorry par parallel to this side okay this direction that's opposite so that's going to be using sine so going away from the angle is sine so that's t equals um, and that's going to be mg times the sine of 60 all right so from the first equation i can work out what m is m is going to be 20 over g times cosine of 60 so in this case i have to work at m first that's 20 over 9.8 times a half right cosine of 60 is a half that's right so um you work out what that is so 20 over 9.8 times 0.5, which gives us 4.0816, 4.0816, which is 4.08 kilograms. And for the tension, we can use this same value here, which is 20 over 9.8 times a half, okay, times the sine of 60. Okay, so the sine of 60 is also a half. So you, you get this. Um, sorry. We just want M. This, in this case, we want MG. Okay, this is, so we, in, in, case, in this case, for, this is part A. For part B, we want T equals MG. MG sine Sixty. Now, mg is equal to twenty over cosine sixty, right? Because mg is is basically this without the g there. Okay, times the sine of sixty, which is root three over two. Okay, so we can put that in a calculator. We have twenty over cosine sixty, which is half. Okay, um, times uh, root three um, over two. And that gives us 20 root 3, as we found before. 20 times root 3, which to 3SF, gives us 34.64. 34.64, one, so it's 34.6 uh, newtons. So there's the tension in the string, and there's the mass, okay, 4.08. So in, in this case, what we've done is we've worked out part B after part A. This is part B and this is part A. It really doesn't matter which way you do it. Okay, the question is probably intended for you to solve in this manner. That's why they have A, find the tension in B, C, and B, find the mass. But if you did it in this method, you'd find the mass first. 
and both methods are perfectly fine. So one of the reasons I wanted to show you this question now was to clear up this kind of issue about how to resolve forces. I hope that helped some of you guys to understand how to do that and clear some of the confusion. Thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular uh, paper, when I answer them, will be in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from this topic of statics, you'll find in the playlist that will appear over here. This is the statics from M1. And if you would like to um, subscribe to my channel, you can click on this link. If you'd like to watch a video that shows you how to use my channel in an efficient manner and find playlists that you might need easily, you can watch the video that will appear at the top here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.